If you watch our other videos, you know Celebrate has been selling technologies to governments that crack supported iPhones and Android devices via USB. In 2021, they announced they could crack Signal's pin-protected encryption of the data at rest. Someone at Celebrite accidentally posted how they crack Signal's encryption in a blog before deleting it. Luckily, copies were already made. The article sheds light into how they crack the encryption, but it fails to connect a lot of the dots, which will attempt to connect. It's unclear if it was just poorly written or if they intentionally left it vague for operational security, although if OPSEC was on the mind, they probably wouldn't have posted it. All the encryption in this case is symmetric encryption. The big thing here is that the keys are stored on the device, so all the pieces to the complex puzzle are available. So anyone with access to the device has the ability to access the keys, and in Celebrite's case, they specialize in cracking locked phones via USB. Many banking apps like Venmo have a similar architecture with keys stored on the device. The primary reason developers do this is because it's required to use the application offline, so there's really no way around it. Also, both Android and Signal are open source, which provides clues to solving this puzzle. Signal keeps its database encrypted using SQL Cipher, so reading the data requires a key to decrypt. They found that the decryption key is encrypted and stored in the shared preferences file, and it is decrypted with the Android secret key, which is saved in an Android feature called Keystore. Using the Frida Dynamic Code Instrumentation Toolkit and putting the Android device into development mode, they can access the Android Keystore and view the keys stored within. So they were able to get the Android secret key to decrypt the SQL Cipher key. Once they decrypted the SQL Cipher key, they needed to know how to decrypt the database using the SQL Cipher. So they looked at Signal's open source code and looked for any call to the database, which led them to the parameters they needed to run the SQL Cipher. This unlocked the database and yielded unencrypted messages. But now the unencrypted Signal database showed a new subnode called signal.bd.decrypted that stored the messages. There was one file for the unencrypted messages and one for attachments which were still encrypted. The attachments and messages are also not directly linked. To link the attachments to the messages, it requires parsing. To decrypt the attachments, they looked again into the shared preferences file and found a value under this file that has data and initialization vector fields under it. The data field contained an encrypted JSON file. While they didn't specify, we assume they decrypted it using the Android secret key again or some other key in the key store. Once decrypted, it contains the obfuscated decryption keys for the encrypted attachments. This JSON contains three keys. Classic Cypher Key, Classic Mac Key, and Modern Key. The newer versions of Signal use the Modern Key, so they focused on this key. This Modern Key doesn't decrypt the attachments directly. While they didn't specify, we assume they tried to use the Modern Key first and also tried it with the initialization vector referenced in the other table that was in the same folder. After enough guessing as well as examining the open source code that logically seems to support this, they probably backed into the conclusion that they needed to use the modern key and data underscore random values to calculate the actual decryption key. Somewhere in the source code, they found that the actual decryption key is a hash of the data underscore random value using HMAC SHA-256 algorithm, and the modern key is hashed to create the initialization vector. The open source code also told them Sigma uses AES encryption in CTR mode, so they applied their key to this and unencrypted the attachments. The lessons seem to be pretty straightforward. The keys for data programmatically encrypted on the device tend to also be stored on the device, which means the encryption is not 100% secure, and its main protection is really obfuscation. This has been a similar vulnerability that cryptocurrency stealer malwares exploit. Also, open source code is a double-edged sword. While it allows for more people to test the security and find bugs, analyzing the open source code seemed to be instrumental for Celebrite to find the keys and crack signals encryption. Without it, solving this puzzle would have been much harder. Closed source, obfuscated code that is rigorously tested privately may be the best option for encryption architectures where all of the keys are stored on the device.